Hey everyone, I'm Carolyn, and welcome back to another episode of As I See It. If you clicked on this video because you saw my face, just be warned, this is not about RV life. And if you are here just for RV life, you want to, might want to click away. But if you are interested in politics and social issues and current events, I hope you'll stick around and listen to what I have to say. I want to talk about something today that's been bothering me for a long time. I have seen signs all across the country in my travels. I've heard politicians. I've heard pundits. I have heard the writers and authors and um, founders of Project 2025 say this. I've heard my brother and sister Americans who vote Republican or vote Trump say this over and over and over again. And every time I see it, and every time I hear it, it feels like a kick in the gut. Any idea what it is that bothers me so much? Leave your comments below. See if you see if it's your same thing, or see if you it is what you think it is. Three simple words that really feel like a slap in the face. Take America back. And they say it a lot, and they say it with such passion and enthusiasm, and they say it like. And, and I think this is why it bothers me so much, because what I hear is, it's not yours. You voted for Biden. You vote Democrat. You vote differently than I do. So you don't have a right to this country. It's mine. And we're going to take it back. We're going to take it away from you. You don't deserve it. And it literally feels like a kick in the gut every time I hear it. Partly because this goes against everything America stands for. America isn't about one religion ruling. It's not about one faith, one belief, one race running the country. America was founded on escape from persecution, escape from not wanting to be held under one religion. The pilgrims hopped on those ships in the 1700s because they wanted to escape a monarchy who said, you must be members of the Church of England. They didn't want to be members of the Church of England. They wanted to belong to a separatist church, but they couldn't. England wouldn't allow it. So they left. They left to found a new nation that allowed everyone here once they stole the land, of course, everyone here to practice whatever religion they wanted. There's a lot, a lot of talk now, a lot of ignorant misinterpretation, rewriting of history, that this country was founded as a Christian nation. No, it wasn't. Lauren Boebert is even saying that uh, the separation of church and state is BS. The founding fathers never meant that. That's exactly what they meant. They did not want the United States to turn into the, in England where everybody was forced to uh, practice one religion. They wrote the Constitution to avoid this very thing. And over the next few centuries, immigrants from all over the world flooded to this new place because it welcomed everyone. It welcomed everyone. And that is how this great nation was formed, under a set of rules laid out in the Constitution that said no one class, no one religion shall put their beliefs on everyone else. It's about freedom. It's about allowing me the freedom to worship whatever God I want or not to worship a God to allow me the freedom to have my beliefs, my opinions, to advocate for whoever I want to advocate for, that is what it means to be American. Climbing up on your high tower and saying, only how I think and only how I believe matters, and if you don't believe this way, I'm taking my country back. That is anti-American. That is un-American. This country belongs to all of us. It's huge. There's a lot of people, a lot of races, a lot of religions, a lot of sexual orientations. We need to figure out how to live together. That's what a government is. 
a foundation, a format, a system for allowing us to figure out how to live together. But we can't figure out how to live together when you close your mind and close your ears and say, fuck you, it's not your country, because you're not a Christian, and we're founded on Christian values, whatever Christian values means, and of course that changes over millennia as well, it changes over time. The Bible is literally translated according to whoever's in power, simply to keep people under control. So when these Christian nationalists and these new Christians are saying, we were founded as a Christian nation and we're getting away from that and that's why the country's going to hell, you're persecuting everybody who doesn't believe like you. You're persecuting me because I don't believe like you. You're persecuting anybody who doesn't look like you. It is not your country to take back. It is our country. It's ours. And we need to learn how to live together. How do we do that? Mind your own business for one thing. If you don't like gay marriage, don't marry a gay person. If you don't want to have an abortion, don't have a freaking abortion. If you are upset about trans people and trans teenagers getting the care they need, don't do it yourself. Whatever. I mean, it's not your business. It's none of your business. But you have been trained to believe that the very act of being gay is somehow going to hurt society. You know what I'm seeing? I'm seeing gay people raising children that no one else wants in some cases, adopting or even having kids of their own, providing a two-parent household. And this whole Project 2025 thing is about, oh, well, the, the fall of society is that, you know, too many absentee fathers, and there are too many broken households. Yeah, because men leave. But what we're see but at the same time, you are telling gay people you don't count as parents when they're out there being amazing parents. So just because things don't look the way you think they're supposed to look based on some million, it's an, an exaggeration, thousands year old book that again has been translated over time by men in power to keep people under control. Just because it doesn't look the way you think it should look does not mean it's wrong. Here's one thing I want you all to think about who think you need to take your country back. Back from who? I did this little rant on a RV video recently and I had to take it out for public consumption for advertisers, but I put it on Patreon. And here is the rant and it's applicable to this. Who are you taking your country back from? Other Americans. Black people, brown people, gay people, trans people, even women. I mean, I'm seeing chatter about repealing the right for women to vote. Telling us we can't control our own body. Project 2025 is ending no-fault divorce. There are already states in the nation, was it North Carolina, South Carolina, that says that a woman who's pregnant can't get a divorce. Project 2025, or no, it was J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance literally said if a woman is in an abusive relationship and she gets pregnant, she should stay for the good of the kids. Yeah, because abusive men are so good for the kids raised by one. So while your echo chamber, maybe even your church, your news, your family, your friends are telling you that you need to take the country back from your fellow Americans. I want you to think about who the real enemy is. Who is really hurting our country? Gay people minding their own damn business, living their own damn lives? Women who choose to have abortions for whatever reason, are they ruining your life? And seriously, if you get down to it, are immigrants really, really hurting you? Really? Get honest. How is immigration, even illegal immigration, hurt you? What's really hurting you are out-of-control corporations 
who have poisoned our air, poisoned our food, poisoned our drinking water. I can't even let Sadie go in ponds and lakes and rivers in my travels for fear that she's going to get sick from toxic green algae. Toxic green algae is a result of agricultural runoff and sewer and all kinds of disgusting things that cause the environment for algae to grow and bloom, and it's toxic. Ask Flint, Michigan, who the real enemy is. If they don't have clean drinking water, is that an immigrant's fault? No, it's big business. Big business owns our media. They own our politicians on both sides. Adam Schiff, I'm talking to you. They own everything that is telling us to hate each other. Big business is doing this. They are pitting us against each other, telling you you need to take your country back from gay people. All the while, they're the ones who are murdering people, poison water, fracking, the opioid ep epidemic, literally getting away with murder. But you're mad at immigrants. Or that you should be, you know, upset about gay people, gay marriage. While our environment is going to hell, while one of our presidential candidates, Donald Trump, literally met with big oil executives and said, if you donate a billion dollars to my campaign, I'll do whatever you want. I'll roll back all the laws. I'll let you do whatever you want. Our planet is not going to last forever. They want us distracted. And you're falling for it. It's not your country. It's our country. And the real enemy are big businesses, multi-millionaires, multi-billionaires who are literally poisoning us, murdering us, getting away with it. So do me a favor. Whenever you talk about taking your country back, think about who you're really needing to take it back from. Because it's not me. It's not a trans kid. It's not a gay person. It's not a black person. It's not even an illegal immigrant. It's the people in power who are causing the real harm. That's how I see it. How do you see it? Leave your thoughts below. Thanks for being here.